welcome to the first ever tournament of Unreal Tournament. Six players will be playing over 15 rounds to fight to become this year's Three, champion. Two, one. This is weirdly tense, nothing's happened. Oh, hey. are <laughs> Finally! Oh yeah, Hitler rocking it. Bang to the face! Finally! There it is! <laughs> there it is! There it is! There it is! <laughs> Combo breaker! <laughs> Come back on. Oh, yeah. Shredded. I don't care about that, damn it. <laughs> ah! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, oh, no. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, oh, yes! Yes, hello and welcome to round three, match two of the tournament of Unreal Tournament. Today we have Flying Buckter versus Phaeton XCI. They're appearing on a map called DM Deck Test, which is a work in progress version of the classic Unreal map, Deck 16. The wheel has been spun and the mutator that has been selected for them is Instagib. Phaeton XCI has already shown us in the previous round how well he performs at Instagib. Flying Buckter showed us in his previous map that his strengths lie in map control, taking all the health, all the armor, all the weapons. With this being an Instagib match, that ain't gonna help him. He's gonna have to adapt his tactics to win here. Instagib is one hit, one kill. There's no ammo on the map, there's no health, there's no armor. And even if there was, it wouldn't help. It's one hit, one kill. He's gonna have to adapt his tactics if he wants to come out the Vixer here. Whichever one of these contestants wins today, they will be moving up to joint first place in an attempt to call their way to the top of the table. It's an important match. Let's pass it down to our commentators at DM Deck Test to see how it's all looking. Thanks Tim from the studio, and as the doctor said, I'm getting better every day at the time the cream is helping. I'm joined for this match with Mr. Bishman Rock. Hello there Bish. Hello. So what is the match this time? So we have Flying Buxer and Phaeton XCI up on Deck 16, currently called Deck Test, it's a new variant. Phaeton has one win and one loss behind him, and that is exactly the same with Flying Buxer, so they appear to be on a very level playing field. Okay, this match is an insta-give match, so expecting a lot of kills to rack up really quickly. Yep, Phaeton had an insta-give match in his second round, he did really well at that. Aiming seems to be on his side, he was really good at the long shots. Flying Buckton not so much, he seems to be more built for splash damage, so it'll be interesting to see how well he does. It'll be interesting to see how these two giants of this tournament so far, let's show giants is the correct term to use there, Bish. Uh, there is another giant, but we won't talk about it. Uh, yep, they'll be up any minute now. Three, two, and here we one. go, ready to set off. Oh, uh, nice first kill. Yeah, he's bringing the mosh straight away. The thing is, this game, you do need to rely on being rather accurate. Yes. Yeah, and for him to just come in straight away and catch. Wow. <laughs> I'd say that's a level playing field. This map does look familiar. I remember this map from the original Unreal Tournament. Yeah, it was in the original Unreal, then it was in Unreal Tournament, then I believe it was in 2003 and 2004, and there was a really weird gritty version in UT3. It's been in every single game. I must admit, I haven't played an Unreal Tournament game apart from this one since UT 2004, so it has been quite a while. It's a good one to sit down and play. We can hear the footsteps. I think Phaeton really uses the sound effects to his advantage. Ooh. Ooh, almost had the drop on him, just a bit too slow. Flying Buckter, prattling around with dodging a bit too much, made a bit too much noise, gave himself away. Ooh, ooh. Oh. oh, that is unlucky. Just took a little bit too long to aim there. Yeah, Flying Buckter had him, but he just spent that too much time that Phaeton managed to see him in return. I can see what he's trying to do here. He's trying to listen out for the footsteps. It's a good tactic. He was a bit too brash in his previous match, and it didn't pay too well for him. There's quite a few long corridors in this where you can be really caught out, especially with nowhere to really hide. Such as that corridor just there. Yeah, and that was one hell of a shot. That was a nice long shot there. 
He's making some good use of the dodge mechanic here. So we've got a tied first at the moment. <laughs> you were saying <laughs> that. Yeah. I don't think Phaeton quite <laughs> like not being in the lead. He kind of ran in front of me, Gun, to be honest. <laughs> but as always, trying to be modest about it. Bit too wide of the mark, I think he got a bit too excited there. Ah, but here we've got Phaeton actually using the crouch mechanic to mask his footsteps. Yeah, he's a smart little sausage. Oh, he ah. should have had that kill. Oh, it sounds right. Oh, <laughs> that was very disappointing for them both there. That should have been a lot quicker kill. Yeah, he had the drop on him, he knew he was there. He, just, he, he only missed him by the tiniest bit. But he got it back in the end, so and credit to him. An extra moment there of aiming. Shot. I can actually know our aiming could have made it a lot quicker there, but... So we're three minutes into it and it's 5-4, they seem to be keeping at pace with one another. Well... A little bit short of the shot there. Oof. It's very much a twitch around this. Yes. And I think unfortunately Phaeton seems to have a hand in that. Flying Buckter seems to be best to take a stealthy approach, but the moment he gets noticed... I think he's still trying to suss out Phaeton a little, though. I think if he, if he gets his head round Phaeton's tactics, he could just have him pinned. Seems to have gone all quiet for the moment. It's the mid-match lull. Yeah. Perfect place to put in an advert. <laughs> we'll be back right after these. We'll be back right after this message. Bitch my rock beer. Goes down your throat like it needs to give on the floor. Rather messy. <laughs> Doesn't even make any sense. Not quite sure what he's trying to do here. I think he's just trying to stay away from the open areas. Ten to find when you're on the upper hallways, you're far too exposed. It depends whether he's wasting too much time. He doesn't seem to be looking around too much. He's got blind spots that anything could be there. I think Finn trying to get the loop around on him. We can hear his footsteps. Yeah. Oh, oh! Should have had him. So we're at the halfway point now and Finn has a clear lead. A very clear lead. Near enough double the kills count. Yeah, he, it, it was tied for a good while but he, he just seems to have Minute taking the lead entirely. I think he's starting to panic too much and firing his load a bit too early. Yes. Yeah, I think Flying Buck does probably aware that he's starting to be on a bit of borrowed time now. And he's taking the shots just a bit too early, giving himself away, and when he's giving himself away. But I'm not quite sure what he was doing there. I'm not sure either. The shot clearly came from behind him. Yeah. I think it may have been one of those panics. He was overthinking. He didn't have the, the awareness around him. He, and he's given himself away with these stray shots. Ah! <laughs> oh, that is unlucky. Yeah, he had the drop on him and everything, and it just didn't pay off. The boxes were not protecting him much there. Yep. Oh, no. oh, ending the killing spree. At least he got his revenge. But uh, score is 6 to 12. I'll take that yeah, four break. minutes left. It's yeah, going to be an uphill no, bottle. It's going to be an bottle. <laughs> yeah, he may have a lot of bottles. He may bottle it. But it's going to be an uphill battle if he's going to try and bring it back. Fall in the fucking slime. That was stupid. But speaking of bottles, Bishman Rock Beer now available in a multi pack of bottles. Buy it. Buy it now. Fenn's really good at making sure that he doesn't ever stop moving. Yes. Seems to have all gone a bit quiet now. A bit too That's quiet. That's a very good little hidey hole. If he comes from one direction, he'll get a clear shot on him. If he comes from the other, from straight ahead... Oh, oh he's giving himself a win! Oh, oh, that, that is a bad shot. Perfect. We really couldn't afford to miss then. I didn't even go for the teabagging <laughs> maneuver there. That's not very sportsmanlike. A little bit. 
Oh. Ah. I think that was revenge for the teabagging maneuver yeah, there. I think he more than deserved it. Although, what would he be teabagging? There was nothing left. <laughs> Whatever he can get his hands on. <laughs> oh, he's well, he's pulling Three it back. Minutes, Come back on. Come back on. His hands still in it. And he knows when to retreat as well. Yes. Not anymore. Come back off. Come back off. <laughs> <laughs> This game. I think Fitton's definitely getting a little cocky. That was a nice shot. It is. It's victory is within reach. Oh, we're not with another shot like that, it won't be. Yeah, Fitton's just keeping him at arm's length, but it's still possible. There is still only six kills, and in an insta game match, that can happen very quickly. Especially in a small map like this, it won't take too long to find your opponent. So he's never trying to employ the same tactic twice. At least he's always keeping fit and guessing. He's made the wide decision not to follow down. Hmm. Can't hear any footsteps. Not quite sure where fitton has gone. <laughs> he brought that back. But that's time he really couldn't afford to be sneaking around. Well, with just over a minute and a half left, there is only five kills in it. That's going to be a push. Oh, wait, he unfortunately did get away with the there. Ah! So he made it work for him. Yeah. He's keeping moving, he's definitely putting the pressure on. I think he's learnt the tactic that he needs to use for an insta game match. Yep. Keep the panic on. He definitely doesn't want to go down without a fight. <laughs> that was a good tactic, forcing him into the slime. Yeah. Don't know, man, this could be close. One minute remains. Only one minute in it, and only three kills between the two. It sounds like even Fenton's starting to worry now. And it, at one point, I was willing to just say he had it. Oh, Shit. that is unlucky. I honestly thought he had that kill there. It's going to be very close. If Fenton gets left. a kill now, there we go. There it's, we go. it's going to be too tough to pull it back. Doable, but tough. Doable, but unlikely with only 20 seconds remaining. Yep. No, oh, definitely that, not now, no. The match no, definitely no, goes much, to Fenton. Well done, Fenton. Especially when Flying Butter You're falls off the map like that. Well, I suppose health is expendable in this one when it's one hit kill. Six, five, four. Can we get one more kill? Two, one. Oh, he tried for it, bless him. So close, but that was a very good match. It really was. They were they both well skilled. Fain got a bit of a clear lead, and although Flying Buckter tried to pull it back, and he and he did well at trying to pull it back, it just wasn't enough. No cross. He had it down. He had it down, and a kill ratio of 1.38, that is a pretty good ratio. Yeah. We'll now hand it back to the studio. How's it going, Gary? So there we go, Fate and XCI continuing his trend of being an incredibly strong player. This pushes him up to joint first place with Malsoles and Bishman Rock. Flying Butter is left in joint second with Demotan. There's still two more rounds, so all of this could change between now and then. Join us tomorrow for the third match of round three, Bishman Rock versus Demotan. See you then. Oh, oh, they sound like oh, oh, they sound like oh, oh, they sound like.